Hi everyone, Jennifer here. Thank you so much to everybody who joined me for the Map and Lucia book club live this morning. I had technical difficulties again. I'm telling you, I'm gonna have nightmares about live streaming. <laughs> and I don't know why I feel like I'm the only YouTuber who cannot figure this out. So I apologize in advance. I appreciate everybody who stuck with me. A fair warning if you're about to watch the video, the quality is not good. The sound is not good and the image is very blurry. So just feel free to put it on in the background, maybe fold some laundry or do something that you've been needing to do for a while to listen to the chat. I still hope that you contribute in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And I apologize, I will be working on my live streaming skills. I need to ask all of my skilled friends on YouTube how they do it because I clearly don't know. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you. And I just wanted to apologize in advance for the quality um, of the video. But I do want to thank everyone who joined me today and I hope that you still get something out of the book club. And having said all of that, let's get into it. Au reservoir. Okay, but I'm just going to jump back into um, the book club because we, we were talking for a long time and um, and I had to get rid of that video because of all the technical difficulties. So, hi Abigail. Hi Claudia, hi Amber, hi Universal Journey, hi Jody, hi Diana. Hello ladies, thank you for bearing with me. I'm just going to jump right in and hopefully you can hear me and I'm just going to quickly summarize what I was talking about because I don't think that other video that I did is going to be available. But basically we're talking about Lucia in London first. I just want to quickly, I will take like two minutes and go over Lucia in London because I've been going over it for a while and it hasn't uh, worked out. but. The thing about Lucia in London is that um, a lot of distasteful things happen in it. And Ben's about to tell me something else. And Lucia in London, basically, there's a few things going on. Uh, so Lucia and Peppino inherit a lot of money from his aunt. Everyone is speculating what they inherited. They moved to England. And um, I'm sorry, they moved to London. They're already in England. And everybody is wondering about them. But the thing is, is that Lucia is a big fish in a little pond in Rizm. And in London, she is a small fish in a big pond. And I don't think she likes that very much. So while she's away, Daisy Quantock sort of steps into her role as social queen of Rizm, which is, is typically for Lucia's role, right? And so then Daisy, she gets involved with this planchette, which is basically a Ouija board. Okay, there, we're talking about a few things that are not appropriate for children. I gave that disclaimer in my other video. And she, she takes up a guide called Abfu, okay? And everybody in the town kind of goes along with it. And, uh, and you know, Lucia thinks it's ridiculous too. She says, if only Daisy took up common sense as a guide. Um, but the thing that I wanted to drive home here is that E.F. Benson shows these crazy things that these people are willing to do to be seen as popular, to be seen as, um, uh, you know, the, the height of society. And isn't that the same today with celebrities on social media? You'll see a celebrity and what they're doing on social media, and you just cannot believe the distasteful things that they are doing. So, for example, you see celebrities posing with hardly any clothes on, or you'll, you'll have a shock value a lot of the times. Like with comedians, they'll just have shock value in their jokes. They're not necessarily funny, but they know that they're going to get into the newspaper the next day if they tell this joke. So I was thinking, you know, E.F. Benson is such a wonderful satirist, and this is what he's driving home. That in order to be popular, in order to be relevant, people will do anything. So um, Daisy's doing the planchette, and that's just ridiculous. And then Lucia, I got really angry with her in this book because I really did not like um, the storyline when she was in London and it was seen back then that if you had um, if you had a lover that that was very exciting okay so she pretends that Stephen is her lover and I said I wrote in my notes here Lucia is despicable wanting to have the appearance of having an affair because it's the thing to do this was my lowest point with her, okay? To disrespect her faithful husband like that is totally unforgivable. But the irony of it when, because she wouldn't in a million years, um, yes, shameful Lucia, Jesse, <laughs> she wouldn't even in a million years, 
cheat on Pepino. She loves Pepino. She wouldn't do it. She just wants the appearance of doing that, which is just so backwards. And I mean, either, either one is bad. But it was hilarious when Stephen ended up accidentally going into her hotel room in his honey-colored pajamas. <laughs> and they were both so horrified and, and freaked out. I thought that was actually a really funny part um, of the book. And I wrote, then why is she trying to make the appearance that they're having an affair? And I said, that's backwards morals. Okay, so cut to the end of the book because we're really going fast through this one is that, uh, you know, Lucia, she comes back to Rizm. She doesn't like it in London anymore. Um, she finds out, we all find out that Daisy was faking the guide all along, Abfu, and of course she was. Um, and then I put that my takeaways here, and I would love to hear your takeaways uh, in the side. Ms. Morbier says, I agree, the lover part is the lowest thing she has done thus far for attention only. Why are people so desperate for attention? Totally. And I think E.F. Benson is, is driving that point home, where you think, why would anybody do something so stupid, right? Uh, yet people today are constantly doing things that stupid, if not stupider. <laughs> uh, so I think it's definitely a social commentary, right? Uh, so my, my takeaway here is that um, I wrote from Lucia in London is that they're willing to stoop to new lows in order to be seen and talked about. There's no good role models at all, and they all need to get a life at this point. So I think that what, what E.F. Benson was doing here was intentional. He wanted us to be tired with, I mean, it was just getting ridiculous. Something has to change. We know that Lucia is going to move to Tilling in the next book, Map and Lucia. And that is what happens. So if you have any commentary to put on Lucia in London, definitely go ahead. But I think it was a transition book uh, for sure. And I just wanted to write, uh, read something that um, a reader left me, Katrin, who could not join us for the live chat because I told um, I told you if you had any questions or comments, if you couldn't join us, to leave them below. And she said, both Lucia in London and Map and Lucia are my favorite books in the series. She said, in my opinion, Lucia in London foreshadows today's obsession with social networking and celebrity culture, and I found that fascinating, and I totally agree with her. She said, Map and Lucia is just a great narrative of two small town superheroines. Okay, so I, I, I liked her feedback on that. Now, as you are watching, please let us know in the comment section who is your favorite character in these series? Um, who's the most despicable? Whose behavior is the most despicable? What's your favorite part in the book? Let me know so I could cut to your comments because I just don't want it to be me talking the whole time. Okay. Uh, Abigail says, you are right. Only what's shocking gets attention. And isn't that sad? And you know, when I um, am reading a news story, if I see something shocking like you know i'm not going to mention the names but the reality tv family that's always in the news and they're taking their clothes off on social media and everything i on purpose i never click on those articles because i don't want to feed that i don't want the media because they know those are the articles that get the most clicks right amber says absolutely a social commentary and serves as a cautionary example of how easy it is to become absorbed in inappropriate social norms absolutely um how when you don't have your mind and your priorities straight, you end up making poor decisions, right? Daisy and the planchette, uh, Lucia and this ridiculous plot to act like she has um, a lover when she would never in a million years do that. I mean, it's just you lose your common sense when your priorities are out of whack. And that's what I took from uh, Lucia in London. Okay, let's get to Map and Lucia. And this is my favorite book. I love it when Lucia finally moves to Tilling. So the book opens up and Peppino has died, her husband, uh, and her faithful husband who has honestly put up with so much with this woman. <laughs> so Peppino has died and Lucia is at a loss. And so she and Georgie, you know, Georgie's her best friend. And by the way, Georgie is my favorite character. I love how he says things are tawesome. <laughs> I just love that. Um, I laughed at the part in the beginning where Lucia calls Georgie an old maid in Italian when Grosvenor walks in. Um, but I think it's funny that as soon as Peppino dies, or not as soon as, but shortly after, Lucia and Georgie just automatically assume everyone thinks that they will get married um, because they've had such a dynamic friendship for all of these years. And, and she's nervous about remarriage, and so is he. 
And it seems like they don't want to, but yet they still want to maintain that closeness that they've always had. So of course, Lucia rents mallards in Tilling from Miss Map, and Georgie follows her, and he rents in Tilling as well for the summer. And um, I, I wrote down here the first spar between Lucia and the gardener. So I love the little spars that happen, especially between Map and Lucia. But first with the, the gardeners. So Map has this, Miss Map has this beautiful house, mallards, and this gorgeous garden full of produce that Miss Map sells at the market. And so Lucia is in this space where she is renting this house, but she is unable to pick the fruit and vegetables from her own backyard. The gardener picks it and sells it at the market. So she has to go down to the market and pay for the fruit and vegetables that are coming out of her backyard. And she is really upset by this. I think anybody would be. I mean, who wouldn't want to just go back there and pick an apple and just, you know, rather than paying for it, it seems ridiculous. Um, so one of the quotes from this section that I really loved was saying that when Lucia was distraught, she tranquilized herself by playing the piano. So she was so upset about the situation that she tranquilized herself by playing the piano. And I love that. And um, I wanted to ask you, how do you tranquilize yourself? Uh, today, a lot of people tranquilize themselves by binge watching a show on Netflix or going on social media. But I love that Lucia sat at her piano in order to calm, calm her nerves and, tra and tranquilize herself. I thought that was really neat. Yes, Valerie writes, Map and Lucia was televised. There's a DVD on the BBC. And there are two shows. I was talking about this in the other live chat that went horribly wrong. There is an older one with Prunella Scales as Miss Map. You know, she was from Faulty Towers. And Geraldine McEwen, who was Miss Marple later in life. And that series is excellent. I recommend it. It's so good. If you've read the books, you should watch it. Um, I don't know about the new one. There is a new one, though, for Masterpiece. Okay. Alan Young writes, Georgie is my absolute favorite, but Lucia is a close second. Miss Morbier writes, I love the plot twists involving everyone shifting to a different home. Yes, and the negotiations involved. Very entertaining. And Jesse uh, from Dancing for Joy writes, my roommate at the college played violin to soothe herself after traumatic events. So chic. Yes. You know who else did that? What other literary character did that was Sherlock Holmes. He would play the violin when he was trying to solve a case. And I think it's so much nicer to resort to uh, playing an instrument or, you know, doing something creative rather than just vegging out on the sofa <laughs> when you need to tranquilize yourself. Okay, moving on to my next point, and please keep your comments coming because I love hearing what you have to say. I put, Lucia is assertive. So Miss Map is doing all these things that are bothering Lucia. She is too familiar with her. She calls her Lulu, okay? And that's a nickname that Lucia has not sanctioned, okay? Lucia finds that too familiar. Uh, and, and Lucia is very assertive. So she decides to confront Map about the gardener situation and she tells her, um, you know, I am paying for this house, therefore I will pick the vegetables and the fruit, and I will not go buy them at the store. And she just, she just tells Miss Map that. And that is something that I admire about Lucia. You can't mess with Lucia. She is very assertive, and um, that's something that I personally need to work on, because I kind of tiptoe around situations. If I'm feeling wronged, I don't really come out and say it, just like she does. But I think that the fact that she tranquilizes herself on the piano, that's like the thing that gives her the clarity of how she needs to act. So what do you think? I want to hear from you if you feel like you are assertive enough or if you need to work on being assertive like Lucia. Okay, let's see what my other notes here are. Oh, yes. So Miss Map is calling her Lulu. And she's also entering the house without knocking, which of course is very rude, but it's Miss Map's house. She feels like she can just walk in, but that drives Lucia crazy. So Lucia has a bolt put on the door. <laughs> and I thought that that was, uh, was so funny. So in the two ways that Miss Map is too familiar with her, um, she, she calls her Lulu and she walks in unannounced. And I put, um, here because I want to hear from you. Has anyone ever been too familiar with you? You know, how do you feel, for example, when a child uh, that you just met comes up and calls you by your first name? 
that seems to be a newer thing. You know, when I was growing up, we called people Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so. And today it's gotten a little bit more casual where we tend to call people Miss and then their first name. So Miss Jennifer, which, you know, I think is fine. But it is a bit, you know, you're, you're taken aback a bit when someone just calls you by your first name, a child, for the first time, I, I think. So let me know what you think about that. I had a funny story, uh, well, not funny, actually. I was a bit traumatized by it. But when I lived with Madame Chic, you know, in France, the language is a little bit different. There is tu and there is vu. And tu is the familiar version of you, and vu is the formal version. Of course, I used vu every time I referred to Madame Chic and her husband. But when I met her daughter, who was definitely older than me, she was a married woman, um, I used tu with her. And I realized afterward that that was a faux pas and that I don't know if most, if, if people care about that in France, but that family cared about it. And I think it was a, an insult that I used to, to you instead of V-O-U-S stories. So let me know about your stories uh, if, if people have been too familiar with you. Okay, another funny subplot is that Full Jam, who is Georgie's parlor maid, is getting married to Lucia's uh, chauffeur, Cadman. And Georgie says, how could she do this to me? And I thought that was so funny because he's being so selfish. He is only thinking about himself. You know, he doesn't want his parlor maid to get married because he just wants her to look after him. Uh, so, you know, yes, these people are selfish. And I, that's what I love about these characters from E.F. Benson, because you love them, and at the same time, you're horrified by them. Uh, they're very human. All right, so we move on, and I have another quote here that I love from the book, uh, where it says, Lucia put in force the disciplining, the disciplinary measures for the reduction of Elizabeth. She needs to reduce Elizabeth, and isn't that funny, because Lucia just swoops into this town where Elizabeth is the reigning social queen, and Lucia says, oh, no, 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 I'm going to reduce you. <laughs> so right off the bat, they both have an agenda. Ms. Morbier writes, I think being assertive some of the time is appropriate and other times, depending on the situation, it's fine to just let things be. I agree. Uh, but I think that if I were Lucia in that situation with the vegetables and the fruit, I would have said something because that would have driven me nuts if I had to, if I had to walk to the grocery store to pay for the fruit that was already in my backyard that I was already paying for. Um, and it's quite funny because Miss Mapp is an opportunist. She always scores. So when Diva finds out that uh, from Lucia that Miss Mapp is charging Lucia way more for her house, yet uh, Miss Mapp is paying Diva the same price, um, you know she she just she's a businesswoman. Miss Mapp is, and she's very good with money. And so she's charging Lucia. She's getting money from the the groceries and everything, and it's uh, quite funny here. Okay, Celeste says, I recently moved to the southeastern part of the U.S. and was shocked the first time a woman noticeably younger than me called me honey. I think it's not rude in this culture, but I felt so strange. Yes, I, I think, um, especially when you walk into stores, I actually got an email from an English gentleman who said that um, someone referred to him as a guy. And, and the way he wrote, that just doesn't sound that bad, but... He said someone was helping him and he just said, one second, I'm just helping this guy. And he said that it was shocking. He just sent me an email a few, a few uh, weeks ago and I remember reading that. So yes, I think we've lost the formality with which we, um, with which we refer to people. Okay, so then we go to the point of the rejection of Lucia and Georgie's paintings. They are submitting their paintings. And Miss Mapp, of course, um, Miss Mapp has this horrible scheme where she doesn't even show the paintings to Mr. and Mrs. Wise. She just flat out rejects them. And, um, and so uh, Lucia and Georgie just think their, their feelings are a little bit hurt. But then when they realize what actually happens, it's interesting to see what Lucia does. So Lucia, let me go to my notes here. She takes the moral high ground, it says. Okay. So she says, uh, you know, she chose to just cover for Miss Mapp, even though she knew that Miss Mapp was the one who rejected her paintings, right? She chose to cover for her, and she said that she took the moral high ground. She said it was more satisfactory to do so. 
And there, so there are some times where Lucia horrifies me, and there's some times where I think, you know, that was a really classy thing to do. She could have thrown Miss Map under the bus and humiliated her, but she chose to take the moral high ground. And, um, and but of course, she keeps it in the back of her pocket just in case she needs that information <laughs> for the future. Um, but I wanted to ask you, have you ever felt that you took the moral high ground and was it satisfactory, like Lucia found it? Okay, and let's see what people are saying here. Jesse writes, familiarity is an area where I am assertive. A man once touched my hair casually, and I said simply, don't touch my hair. He avoided me after that. I never saw him again, even though we were co-workers. Oh, that's good. Yes. I, I would agree. I would, I would not let someone randomly touch my hair. <laughs> um, Diana writes, I call everyone older than me, ma'am and sir, even the people at the checkout or drive through But I've been asked not to refer to some people as ma'am because it makes them feel like we're not friends. Isn't that interesting? Yes, yeah, sometimes when you uh, refer to people properly, then they feel old. So that's another thing, um, you know. Okay, now we're going to move on to the talking point about Italian. And Georgina, or uh, Georgina, Georgie and Lucia are always talking about how they are fluent in Italian and they speak to each other in Italian. Of course, neither of them actually speak Italian, but they put on airs so as to seem cultured. Now, another, another idea from this is that um, how things have changed, where back then you wanted to appear cultured and intelligent and smart, so they're lying about thinking they know another language. Now, people just don't really care about appearing cultured at all. They want to appear um, you know, beautiful or hot or fit or whatever they want. Cultured? Nobody cares, right? So, but back then, uh, they cared. So, uh, Mr. I believe it was Mr. Wise's sister, the Contessa de Ferra Leone, is coming into town, and she really does speak Italian. She's an Italian Contessa. She married into uh, Italian aristocracy. So, of course, Georgie and Lucia freak out because they don't actually speak Italian, and they don't want to be found out among the whole town of Tilling. So, um, so now, what do they have to do? I wrote, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Because now, Lucia has to pretend that she has the flu, and Georgie has to leave town when the Contessa comes. And I'm thinking, this is not a good plan, because she is Mr. Mr. Wise's sister, and she will be back. <laughs> so they can't pretend that they have the flu every time she comes into town. They need to learn Italian, right? So, um... There was that whole charade, and then Georgie ends up going on the, the cruise, and he meets the young girl who's learning Italian, and he has her write the letter, and they forge that from Lucia. So it just goes to show, don't put on airs, don't lie, don't pretend that you can do something when you can't, don't boost your resume up like that if you really can't uh, prove it, right? And um, I thought that that was really funny. So have you ever... Have you ever said that you could do something when you couldn't do it? And I definitely have. I worked at a costume shop when I was in college, and I told them that I could sew, which I can, but not very well. And so I ended up, they ended up uh, letting me go because I was not that good at sewing. I boosted up my resume, just like Lucia said she could speak Italian, <laughs> and I was found out. All right, let me read some of your comments here. Valerie writes, there's quite a lot of gaining the moral high ground between those two. Yes, it is satisfactory. Politeness and manners will always win through. Yes, I believe so. I believe it's always good to take the moral high ground, even if you're infuriated. Uh, Sarah writes, I think it's really cultural. In Sweden, it used to be very formal. People were addressed with their work titles, Mr. and Mrs. and Miss, like bank director Svensson. Yes. And since then, a social reform in the 60s made being too polite sound silly and rude, and titles are used very rarely. Yes, I feel like as we move toward modern society, titles uh, are becoming less and less relevant. I apologize, there is a dump truck right outside <laughs> my house. Okay, Sarah writes, when meeting relatives, from example, from England, I always try to use appropriate titles, but it's so foreign to me, I slip up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree, and I think in France, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think formalities still do mean something. I mean, it's part of their language with the two versus the vu, which was something that was new to me, and, and I misused it several times. Okay. 
Um, let's see if I missed anything on this page of my notes. Ah, yes. So it's, it's hilarious. So Lucia puts up the lock on her door to keep Miss Map out. And Miss Map comes in and she literally breaks the lock. She forges her way into the room. Now, when Lucia is discussing how she's going to throw the fate in her garden, Miss Map is, is upset. She does not want Lucia to throw the fate and uh, she's upset by that. And so, uh, <laughs> let's see. I, I wanted to read my exact notes here because I thought it was quite funny. Yeah, so Map is worried that people will walk through her house at the fate. And uh, Lucia says, don't worry, I've put a chain on the door. No one would be so ill-bred as to break the chain, which is obviously a dig at Miss Map, who just broke the chain. Uh, to the door. So she's saying that that, that would be someone who is ill-bred. So she is, she does put Miss Map in her place every now and then. Okay, and Lucia decides she loves Tilling so much. And uh, also, I'd like to hear from you about the side characters. Who are your favorite side characters? Of course, there's uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wise, there's quaint Irene, there's Diva. Um, who else is there? The Padre. And uh, all of these characters just make Tilling life so fun, and I love all the social gatherings that they have together. So Lucia decides to sell her home in Rizm and move to Tilling, much to Map's dismay. She will buy Grebe, and she needs to convince Georgie to move to Tilling too. And that's, you know that's not going to be hard because Georgie's uh, parlor maid, Foljam, is marrying Cadman, Lucia's chauffeur. So she knows that Georgie will go to Tilling because he can't live without Foljam. Uh, so, of course, everything works out. Lucia is going to buy Grebe, and uh, Georgie ends up um, buying a place as well in Tilling. And Elizabeth is totally threatened that Lucia is, uh, is moving to Tilling because now she has competition. I think she was just thinking she was just going to be there for the summer, and then she would go back to Rizm, and she would not be a problem, right? And I just wanted to read some of your comments here. Valerie says, my aunt pulled up the local vicar for using her Christian name. She pointed out that they hadn't been introduced formally. Yes, yeah, so some people are very traditional in that way, and it does bother them. And we are in a strange social time where it's almost like anything goes, but then if, if anything goes, that does offend certain people. Okay, so when we get back to Lucia's house in Grebe, Elizabeth is trespassing because she wants to find the recipe for lobster alorism. So she, Lucia is gone and Elizabeth breaks and enters into her house to find the cookbook. So she's rifling through the cookbook to steal the recipe for lobster alorism. And E.F. Benson gives us a deus ex machina by sending in the flood. And of course, this is just totally wild and crazy, but the flood comes in and Lucia and Georgie, or I'm sorry, Lucia and Map drift out to sea on Lucia's kitchen table. Okay, and this is quite a funny part. Now, everybody thinks that they are dead because they have not been seen for months. So, of course, you know, they think that they, they've been gone. Georgie is totally depressed. Uh, Georgie and, um, oh, I believe it's, it's frozen now. Is it frozen? Georgie and Major Benji find out that they are to inherit the estate of Map and Lucia. There, I think I'm back. I think it froze for just a moment. Let me know if you can see me now. So Georgie finds out that Lucia leaves everything to him, and she's a very wealthy woman. Miss Map has left everything to Major Benji. Now, Major Benji and Georgie react totally differently in this circumstance. Georgie's very respectful. He ends up paying the servants out of his own pocket. He buys that plaque to commemorate them. You know, they all think that they're dead. Major Benji... Totally opposite. He's so excited. I mean, he moves into Mallard's. He buys a sports car. He's buying wine. <laughs> he is living it up. He's thrilled to have inherited Miss Map's fortune. And of course, uh, the ladies come back, and they are not dead. And, and they ended up being on that ship with the Italian sailors, which again is hilarious because Lucia really was found out because she did not speak Italian, and Miss Map knew that. So Miss Map had that one on her. Um, I said the triumphant return when they get back. 
And basically what happens there, there's that awkward time where Miss Mapp is throwing all of Major Benji's stuff out the window <laughs> because she is so horrified that he has moved into her house. I mean, how would you feel if that was you? How would you feel if, if, if someone thought you were dead and they just moved into your house and started spending all your money <laughs> and everything? So I thought that was hilarious. Well, of course, Miss Mapp and Major Benji, they end up getting married. And um, at the reception, what do they serve? But lobster alorism. And Lucia is livid. And that's where the book ends. And it just sets it up for the next books in the series. And I just, I love these books. I just think that they are so funny. And the one-upmanship that happens, the, it's like a study of human nature and all of the ugly parts along with the good parts. And it's just brutally honest and it's embarrassing and it's cringeworthy, but it's also funny. So I really love that about these books and the book Map and Lucia is one of my favorites. Um, now the books get really good too from here and there's only two more in the series. And I would like to do those for a book club as well on The Daily Connoisseur. And so I think the next two books are The Worshipful Lucia. And I think it's called something else in England, but I'll, I'll try to write that in my blog post. And Trouble for Lucia. So uh, those are the last two books in the series. And I would love to continue and read them because things get really good. Because I, I won't tell you what happens uh, with Lucia, but you know, Elizabeth... Map and Major Benji get married, and uh, things get really good from there. Okay, so let's see what people are saying here. Valerie says, I love Queen Irene. <laughs> she doesn't give a hoot. Yes, that is true. Yes, and Jesse's excited to read the next two books. The next two books are great. And if you can find these on audiobook, they are wonderful. They are read by Miriam Margulies, and she just has a wonderful way about um, expressing all the characters. So I just wanted to thank you for joining me. I'm sorry about the te technical difficulties. And I know that this was a busy day for many people because so many people, their children go back to school today. I know that they do over here in California. So thank you so much for joining me. Yes, Jesse, Lucia's Progress is the alternative title for the Worshipful Lucia. So if you can't find the Worshipful Lucia, look for Lucia's Progress. But I will leave it in the comments, uh, in the info box below. And um, we won't do the book club for another few months. I'll give people plenty of time to read the books. But I just wanted to thank you for joining me uh, for this. And if you're watching this after the live stream, please chime in below on any of the things that we have been discussing about the Map and Lucia books. Yes, Diana. <laughs> she says California schools are already heading back. We have most of the month left. Yes. The public schools here are starting this week, next week, and it's so hot. It's like 110 degrees outside. It's, I'm not kidding. It's very, very hot. So, um, But yes, thank you so much for joining me today for the, the live stream, and I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, but I will sign off by saying au reservoir, which is what they love to say in Tilling, <laughs> and I hope that you join me for the next book club, and I really enjoyed this chat with you. So thank you ladies for joining me and I will see you on Thursday for a fun video and you're going to like the video on Thursday. Thank you, Ms. Morbier. I had fun too. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time on The Daily Connoisseur. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.